Yeah, good evening, Bush Camping Tools here. Well, this is the very first video, I believe, which I'm going to show you guys, which is not filmed in the field, as most of my 99.9% .9 of my videos are. And the reason is, is because I want to do something a, a, a little bit more scientific here to check out a particular product. And this is the product here, the uh, Fire Dragon Green and Clean Solid Fuel. And on the packet it says, words like the ultimate solid fuel, uh, it says it's quick and easy to ignite. Uh, it's light even when wet, can light it even when wet. It's uh, non-toxic, odorless, very little soot, suitable for extreme conditions, made from sustainable ingredients, uh, and burns approximately eight minutes burn time. There's an asterisk next to that. And then it says in fine print down here, for best results, use Fire Dragon with the BCB cooking system. Okay, so we are not going to use this Fire Dragon with the BCB cooking system. I just thought I'd uh, tell you that straight away. So I'm going to come back to this uh, a bit later on, but quickly to say here, it says on the box, applications for camping festivals, boiling, doesn't say boiling what, we're going to talk about boiling water though, military, doesn't say what kind of military, fire lighting, cooking and barbecues. Now straight off, um, my prediction is that these things, this is what the solid fuel is in, uh, is not going to be good for much at all except for maybe starting barbecues and lighting fires, um, uh, maybe setting someone else's tent on fire at a festival or whatever, but let's see if I'm wrong about that. Okay, so the first thing uh, I'm going to do is I've got a little Esbit folding stove here, and these things are used for burning solid fuel. Uh, and this is an Esbit copy, by the way, but it's a similar thing. So in order to burn... Uh, this material here, uh, if you just ignite this, first of all, this plastic's going to burn, it's going to make a big mess. These things melt, they actually melt. It's, a, it's a, a, a type of a gel with alcohol in it, denatured alcohol, all right? That's all it is. And this is rubbish, this is not environmentally sound, even though it has recyclable uh, stamp on the back. This is plastic and foil. If you really don't want to dump this in the bush, you've got to bring it out with you. In order to burn it in something like that, you've got to put it in a little metal uh, tray like that. Okay, so let's get on with that and do that. And we're gonna see whether or not we can uh, boil some water in there. We're gonna first take that out of there. So I'm just gonna go and get some water now. So I've filled up this pot. It has um, basically one and a half cups of ambient temperature water in it. Okay, I don't no good putting hot water in it because where are you gonna get hot water from out in the bush, unless, of course, you could leave it in the sun. If you want to boil something a bit quicker, there's a tip if it's really hot. So I, I'm going to take this uh, out of the packet because I don't want to uh, smoke up the house with the burning plastic. See how easy this is to remove from the plastic here. Take that off of there. And you can smell the alcohol straight away. I'm going to put the gel into there like that straight away. Uh, I will like that, and then I will put on the pot of water and then we're going to time that and see how long it takes to boil if it does boil at all before the gel runs out. Whoops, that's pretty, pretty vicious. Let's put that on there and let's time that. I'll just get my watch here so you can see the time here and we'll just mark that, okay, and we'll see how long it takes to boil the water. All right. Um, how many minutes? We haven't even gone a minute yet. Just on a just on a minute. Now there's the watch. I'll just shove the watch in the water. <laughs> right. We haven't gone a minute yet, and I start to see small bubbles being formed on the bottom of this stainless steel pan. This is a stainless steel pan which is coated in copper on the outside. Copper is a good conductor, better conductor than uh, stainless steel. I do have to say though, if you really, really, really have uh, your pots and pans super clean, in other words, uh, very shiny, especially copper. Copper will actually reflect a lot of the heat away, so you don't want to do that, okay? It's okay to be a bit tarnished. Okay, so we've got some bigger bubbles coming there. We're on one minute now, and uh, let's see. So they say it goes for eight minutes. We've got one minute on there now, and we've got some bubbles forming there. And of course, we know that if we have contaminated water, okay, it's starting to just slightly boil now. 
and that's it uh, about almost two minutes gone by now uh, we know you need to boil contaminated water for at least 10 minutes not eight minutes so you'd have to shove another one of these things into the system and we'll look at that in a minute how economical this is okay so that's boiling right now and that's only taken like uh, under three minutes uh, according to my watch and we've got boiling there alrighty under three minutes let me have a look now at the base and see I'm just going to remove the camera I won't stop recording here I'm going to remove the camera though and and uh, see what it looks like from below what we've got now this is an alcohol flame most of it has uh, already burnt away this is gook in there and alcohol of course uh, burns very very hot it's a big wide flame we've got under there because I'm burning it from the width of the pot so the alcohol is basically volatilizing out from underneath there. there's a lot of vapor the, the, the flame is reaching most of the bottom of the pot okay and we're really boiling on there now okay so that was under under four minutes definitely to get one and a half cups of water boiling so that looks okay but can we go for 10 minutes if that was contaminated water well one and a half cups is not much water you know uh, we really need to add more water to get the thing going but we can work that out uh, approximately if we were to uh, increase the volume now we've got a lot of flames coming up here this is not the correct burner as I said flames are coming up around the outside of the pot it may be a bit difficult to see there so um, and you saw too when I ignited this thing with the match the vapors ignited uh, well before I got the match anywhere near these things so you've got to be very careful using these uh, types of uh, fuel. It's not really solid fuel, it's a semi-solid fuel. But it has gone liquid in there. You cannot place these things directly into these type of airs bit things. They are only designed the airs bits for using proper hexa um, mean tablets in there. Otherwise this would melt and it would run everywhere and set the place on fire. Okay. Now you have to remember uh, this kind of setup, this is uncontrollable. Uh, for, for cooking with you can't adjust the heat the heat is it's either on or off these things and and how quick it boils depends on the diameter of the flame how much water you've got the kind of pot you're boiling things in and if we can have a look underneath there there's my tarnished copper based camping pot and I've seen a few trips there but yeah let's have a look how are we going there with the fuel we still got a bit of fuel left it's still going like no tomorrow let's check the time Hold on, get my watch and shove the time in there. So we've just gone uh, over six minutes now, okay, over six minutes. And it's boiling very vigorously. Now remember this was only one and a half cups of water, barely anything to do, uh, you, you know, you, you can't really do anything with that. Uh, and it certainly wouldn't be worth boiling one and a half cups of water just to purify it. I'd want to be getting more water than that. Or, um, you know, this would be okay for cooking or heating up some food, one of these tablets, because it looks to me as if the tablet is uh, almost spent, but we'll see. Now, the other thing with this experiment is, of course, there's no wind in here. So we're not taking, you know, I have not taken into account uh, variations in boiling time due to wind uh, because the wind would be blowing the heat if there's a lot of wind and you don't protect this system like any system the heat is going to go elsewhere and you can see these flames leaping up around the outside of the, the container here okay so of course if there was wind and you couldn't protect it the boiling time it would probably take longer to boil okay so that is now that that's uh, basically done and let's put the watch in there that is 10 minutes so it's just just gone not quite not quite 10 minutes so if you had a larger volume and you wanted to boil it for 10 minutes all things being equal and of course that's not the case usually in the wilds you would need more than one of these uh, one of these containers there's six in a box and you'd need at least two I would say Okay, already out of your six, so you've only got four left. All right.
that's the residue which is was which was left uh, in this tin lid in there so whatever you're gonna burn these things and it doesn't burn to completion like the hexamine tablets they burn to completion with almost nothing there's nothing left at the end of it whereas these things clearly leave a quite a lot of residue in there which would have to be disposed of I don't know uh, whether that's toxic or not they say there's nothing toxic in these things let's see exactly what do they say on there uh, they do say it is highly flammable and they certainly are environmentally friendly and waterproof so um, and non-toxic let's see also odorless and non-toxic resulting in a clean burn yes it is a clean burn because alcohol burns very very cleanly that's true but uh, whether or not the residue is non-toxic or not is another thing they don't say anything about that so yes okay boiling it seems to be okay for boiling um, lighting fires I would disagree with that because the thing melts so and in actual fact I have used these things trying to light a fire with they melt they go everywhere they're absorbed into the dirt uh, and, and, and and they don't work very well for that there's better ways to light fires cooking yes you could cook I think that there would be uh, compared to solid traditional hexamine solid fuel tablets that would be quite expensive to try to cook with uh, there's six in one of these boxes I've already used one you'd need two to boil uh, three cups of water uh, if you wanted to use it for uh, purifying water uh, sure it would quickly heat some food up that's pretty good uh, but then again you know uh, you could eat the food cold you know I'd like to reserve these kinds of things for um, you know it's got to be something cheap if it's if it's going to be used for cooking and especially boiling water with and I don't think that these come under that uh, you know moniker there all right anyway there you go the fire dragon uh, as reviewed for the first time in the kitchen lab bush camping tools here thanks for watching